I cannot get my phone out of this bag. There's a bit of background for you there. You cannot get anything out of it. It's the most annoying thing ever. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I have a lot of you asking me when you're kind of making that decision on what bag to buy, and I, I totally get this because I feel the same way. Sometimes it's not until you've lived with a bag that you know the pros and cons of it. And whenever I do these videos, I get quite a few of you saying, well, if you don't like it, why'd you buy it? And it's like, because you don't always realize what something's going to be like to live with until you've had the opportunity of using it. So that's what I really wanna do is just share with you some of the things that I've personally found with these bags so that if you're looking at them, they might be things you can live with or there might be things you can't and you can end up crossing things off your list. Should we start with the good stuff? I'm gonna start with the best. The first is this, which now I look at it, I really love the way it looks with this outfit. Mm -hmm. This is the Chanel Coco top handle. They're all called the Chanel Coco top handle. Uh, I had one of you asking me about this the other day because I put a picture of it on my Instagram and you wanted to know what size it is. This is the smallest size. You would be amazed what you can get in it. Now this is why, for me, it's one of the best. You can get it in, I think, three different sizes. There is a medium and a large. You, um, you can get it in loads of different colors. I have it in a color that came out in spring, summer 2017, which I love. It's this lemony kind of color. This bag is not, it's no good at all if you want to wear it as a crossbody. And uh, again, I had quite a few of you after the last video I did about crossbody bags saying, those bags aren't meant to be crossbody, blah, blah, blah. And I totally take your point. However, and please let me know if you've experienced this, I don't understand the logic behind the length of the chains that Chanel put on their bags. For example, I've got a classic flap where the chain is long enough that I can easily wear it crossbody and it's very comfortable, but then all the others, the chains are so long when they're fully extended that that for me is too long to be worn on my shoulder. If I want it on my shoulder, I want it to be about here, like under my arm, but it's too short. Maybe if you're smaller, this wouldn't be too short, but for me, that kind of feels a little bit too short to be um, to be worn crossbody. But anyway, there's a bit of background for you there. Size is deceptive on this. It looks tiny, and it is, but there's quite a lot of space going on on the inside. I'm gonna put into here the kind of things that I carry around with me on a daily basis. Where have I put it? Here it is. I'm going to start with my phones. I always carry two phones, one for business and one for pleasure. And one, this one is the Apple X. This one is the Samsung Note 9. I mention it because these are big phones. The Samsung is a big phone. And I know that I've bought bags before and I, and I haven't had my, my like fun personal phone with me. I'm joking. It is for personal, but you know. It's my phone that David doesn't know about. I've not had this with me before and then I've got home and it won't fit and stuff because it is quite bulky. So you've got kind of four sections in this bag. You've got a larger compartment at the front. You've got this weird kind of bit in the middle that is good for card holder is where I put my, my wallet. And then at the back, you've got a narrow one and then a zip in a pocket. Can you kind of see there? There's a zip pocket there. So you can see they both fit really comfortably. They weren't tight to get in there at all. Uh, my wallet. I quite like the way these two oppose each other in colour. I'm going to put those in the central section. See there? Nice and neat. Can you see there's still this big section at the front we haven't used? I mean, if you're someone that prefers not to use a card holder and you like a larger wallet, you could easily get a half size wallet in here because I have before, but I'm going to carry on going adding a powder, a lipstick, by the way, the lipstick that I'm wearing today, I'm actually wearing two. I'm wearing this one, which is a matte liquid lipstick. And then this is one of those pencil things and it's got a slight shimmer and I've put that over the top and I'll put details of both of those below. But I shall put both of those in here now. See there, you've still got, there's still a whole load of room at the front there. So if you're thinking about getting this and you think that you can work with this size, then um, I recommend. Plus as well, it being Chanel, these tend to do so well if you ever decide to sell and you want to get your money back out of it. Again, I have a lot of you saying to me, 
why do you buy just so that you can sell it? It's not that I buy just so I can sell it, it's just that some days you might, you might want to upgrade the bag or something might happen in your life and you need the money. And so I quite like that peace of mind, even if I have no intention of ever selling it. I like that peace of mind of knowing that I can sell it if I want to. The second best small bag is this. I think I'm actually going to compare this to the Chanel because the Chanel makes this look quite big. I think the thing is with these two and the size of them, what makes the difference on the Alma BB is that the space on the bottom is a lot bigger. Does that make sense? So although the width and depth of it's very similar, it's the ground clearance that you've kind of got on it. I have done a video before where I showed this bag, what you could get in it and you can get a bottle of water in it. And I wanted to show that because a lot of you might not carry water with you, but I'm always thirsty. Like I love, I just always have a water with me. And so if I can find a bag that I can fit my water in, that's even better for me. With the Alma BB, I think this is probably the, the most competitively priced bag that I can think of at the moment. Things you get with it, besides the bag, you get your strap handle so you can wear it crossbody. It comes with its own padlock and key, and the key lives in the key cover, which is there. The padlock comes in its own uh, box and has its own tiny dust bag with it as well. So when I got this bag and I unwrapped it, and I think I did an unboxing, which I'll put details of below this if you wanna see that, because I found it quite spectacular when I was opening all of the bits and pieces that I got with it, because I paid 650 pounds for this bag back in 2017 or something. I think it's currently still under a thousand, which I still think is good value for it. The strap is a bit cheap looking. I mean, there's nothing particularly fancy going on with it. it it's just a plain strap and it's got the gold hardware at the end. I do quite like the, the length, the drop of it where it sits. Now for the final, before we move on to some of the worst, it's this. This is the Yves Saint Laurent Toy Lulu. If you're gonna buy one, I must recommend that if, unless you want the in-store boutique experience, buy it from Louisa Via Roma. I did that because of two reasons. First of all, it's rare that this happens, okay? First of all, last autumn, it ran about Cyber Weekend, I'd had this particular bag in my wish list for ages, and for, I don't know why, but they had a 30% Cyber Weekend coupon code and this was applicable, but within a few hours of me buying it, they'd taken this off from the promotion. But the other reason is with Louisa Viaroma, they've got this points, um, like reward scheme, where the more you spend, they give you credit vouchers. Now, yesterday, I was sent a 500 pounds credit voucher to use on there, and I've just bought some clothes and things. You can get this in a few different colors and different hardwares. There's no pocket on the back or anything. See, the thing I hate about these bags, the straps they put on look so cheap, don't you think, with all of them. The inside is very similar to the Chanel top handle, where it's got a larger section there, that kind of slot section that's good for a card holder, and then a narrower section and a zip. In fact, it's pretty much exactly the same. Do you know, I can't believe it, but I think the Chanel is possibly slightly bigger than this. Doesn't look it, does it? That is very similar in size on the inside. These are currently 850 pounds, which is another reason for me why I'm including it in this best small bags, because I think the price is really reasonable and the leather is gorgeous quality. It's a bit lower than I'd like. You can adjust the length though, but I think I've got this on the shortest one. Before I move on to the worst, let me just give you a quick comparison of all three. And the main difference with this one being it doesn't have a top handle. So if you did want to ditch the strap and just carry it as it is, it, you wouldn't be able to do that. You could use it as a clutch, I suppose. Let's talk about the worst. This pains me to confess that whilst I love it and I do not, um, I do not regret getting it at all, for me, because of the size of my phones, I don't feel that it's the best bag when it comes to something that's small but still usable. This is the Mini Lady Dior. If you want a bag, if you want a small bag to use in the evening, this is good. If you want a small bag that you can use in the day where you might carry a bit more than you would in the evening, to me, this is not so good. I'm just gonna start with the makeup and you'll, I think you'll see how quickly this one fills up two lipsticks today. I'm being realistic, This I'm going out in a minute. <laughs> I need to be able to take all this stuff. Powder brush. 
which has taken up that much so far. I'm gonna start with the iPhone X, the iPhone 10. This does actually fit with Waze. So you can get it in there with Waze like that, and then you can close the flap and everything's good and it's in there and it's all neat and tidy. What I tend to find that I start doing is when I'm in and out of my bag in the day, in order to get it in sideways, I have to take a moment to kind of move everything around that's in there. And it doesn't just, how to describe it, it doesn't go in sideways by just dropping it in. You've kind of got to wiggle it to get it in sideways. It's not a tight fit, certainly not once it's in, because the bag, once you get in here, is slightly wider than it is on the top. The Samsung, we've got ourselves a problem here. Can you see it's wider? It does actually fit in just about, but it's quite tight. The Samsung, it's the Samsung that's the most annoying. I can't get it out now. This is what I end up doing. I have both phones. And I don't have the time or the desire to be kind of like, hang on a minute everyone, can I just try and put my phone back in my bag? I end up doing this. Honestly, I end up walking around and it's all just hanging out the top. Unless you are, I would say, using it on an evening, you've got one phone as opposed to two, so maybe I'm not being fair here, and your phone is smaller, then you should be fine. But I think if you're like me and you tend to carry a bit more, the size of it and the flap ends up, it, it all ends up being quite annoying. This is the Hatbox bag by Aspinall of London. You've got to see the inside of this. It's really nice and the strap on it's really nice as well. I mean, we're not to even talking about a really high-end brand here and they've, they've actually thought about the strap and they've put something on that's nice. It looks like this. So you've got an elasticated section there, which I tend to put powder compacts in and things. Then on the other side, you've got this lovely quilted zip pocket. That really reminds me of the inside of the Bentley. That totally reminds me of that whenever I look in there. The strap is great. It's, it's like a really nice thick strap. It's adjustable. When you wear it crossbody, you can adjust it to actually sit at a nice length on you. So that's all great. The reason why this is such a nightmare is because nothing fits in it. But my biggest issue is the fact that the lid doesn't open any more than that. So when you're trying to get stuff in and out, particularly if you've got things stored in that rear pocket, you cannot get anything out of it. It's the most annoying thing ever. It's the Samsung again. How many people have got a Samsung? This does not fit in there. It doesn't fit. So the iPhone does fit in there. And if I demonstrate the rear pocket here, so I've just put a lipstick in here. So that's out now. It really is a pain. This is a bag that I absolutely, I love it, but I hate it at the same time. It's the most frustrating thing to use. It's the kind of thing that I want to use because it looks great. But then as soon as I actually try and make it work and usable in the day, it's so unpractical that it ends up being it's it's always the bag that i leave on the bench that i never really end up using and now finally it will be no surprise to you that the prize for the most annoying bag to use but it's one that i love and i'm glad i bought it and i will never sell it because i love it it's this it's the rabbit bag from loewe the leather is gorgeous I love rabbits, I have rabbits, so I, I saw it. I got it in the sale, actually, on Louisa Aroma. Same problem again with the handle, the strap, where it kind of looks a bit cheap, really, um, and like an afterthought. I really hate it when they do that with bags. They make a beautiful bag, and then it just looks like they took the offcuts of leather and just made a really thin, naff strap to go with it. When you wear this bag, you have to really plan the outfit to work with it because the bag is the star of the show. The way I tend to wear this is with uh, dark colored trousers, tight fitting trousers, and I've got a blazer jacket that comes to about here on me, but it's more like a skirt coat. So it fits like, it fits like a dress and it's all just very plain and black. And then I wear this over the top with some dark glasses and I love the look of it, but it is highly frustrating to use. There is no inner zip pocket in this. The size of the inside of the bag is like this, but here's the thing. Because the bag is circular and kind of like a cone shape, you can't really lie anything flat. So if I begin by showing you what you can fit in it or what you can't fit in it. So I'm gonna start with the two phones. 
and we've already got a problem here. I thought the iPhone fitted in. I've done this before. Oh, here we go. So the iPhone is in there, but because of the angle you have to sit the phone at, already it takes up too much room. The Samsung does not fit at all. Card holder, powder compact, lipstick. It's getting a tight fit. It's a tight fit. You end up with so much wasted space because the phone in the middle creates a divide between each side. If I didn't have the phone in there, it wouldn't be, I mean, it still is a squeeze to be fair. I've taken the phone out and we'll just put all of this stuff in. So there you see the, the problem with it is the small entry point, which means that you can't really see what you're doing. Combined with the abnormal shape of the space inside the bag, it, do, it means that things don't lay flat or um, you can't be organized with it. I highly recommend this brand for all their quality of leather. I, I think out of all the bags I've got, this leather feels the best quality. And also what I like about that the brand is that it doesn't have screaming logos on it. Even though I love a screaming logo, if you don't, I know this is like a gold bunny, but if you were to get the puzzle bag, for example, it's quite understated, it's quite neutral, but it's got that quality. The leather feels so squishy and nice. So I like the brand and I like the bag. It's just very annoying to use. 